Whenever we load a script or invoke a function, a new execution context is created and pushed onto the call stack, which is actually just an execution context stack. But what exactly is an execution context? So execution contexts essentially define the environment in which our code is executed. And it contains many internal components that the engine uses to keep track of the execution flow of that piece of code. And execution contexts use environment records to keep track and maintain the identifier bindings that have been created for the variable declarations, function declarations, all the values within that context. So kind of just see how it works. Let's use this script as an example and see what happens behind the scenes whenever we run this script. So first, as the script is loaded, the global execution context is created. And every execution context goes through two phases. First, we have the creation phase in which memory space is set up for the variable declarations, function declarations, and so on within that context. And then we have the execution phase in which the execution context is on the call stack and the code is actually executed. But first we have the creation phase. So let's see what happens there. The global execution context has many components, but for now, I just want to focus on the realm, the lexical environments, and also the variable environment just to make it complete. <laughs> So the realm points to a realm record and a realm is essentially an isolated environment in which our code runs. So for example, in browsers, a new realm is created whenever we open a new tab, we refresh a page, uh, service workers, web workers, iframes, and so on. So it's essentially just the isolated environment. And a realm consists of several components, including the intrinsics, the global object, and the global environment record. And the intrinsics provide all the standard built built-in uh, objects and functions that are essentially just foundational for executing JavaScript, so like array, function, syntax error, and so on. And then we have the global object, which contains several types of properties. So first we have the specification defined properties, which essentially just expose the intrinsic. So array, function, all the JavaScript stuff is on the global object. And then we have the host defined properties, which in a browser is things like fetch, uh, set timeout, documents, that's also all made available through the global object. And last but not least, we have the user defined properties. So as developers, we can either explicitly add properties to the global object, or we do it implicitly whenever we declare a function in the global scope, or whenever we have a variable with a var keyword in the global scope. These are also added to the global object and are now available, ready to use throughout the entire script. And lastly, we have the global environment record. And again, environment records manage the identifier bindings within that context. So in the case of the global environment record, these values are accessible throughout our entire script. And the global environment record, again, contains another <laughs> an object record. So the object record is essentially just a direct reference to the global object. So this is used by variables with the var keyword and function declarations on the global scope. It also contains a declarative record, and this stores all identifier bindings that aren't variables with a var keyword or function declaration. So everything except for those two. And environment records also contain the value of the this keyword, the notorious this keyword, which in the case of the global environment record is the global this value. And in most cases, this just points to the global object. And finally, it also has an outer env or outer environment property. And in the case of the global environment record, this is null. But later we will see why this is a very important property when we talk about scope, scope chain, and so on. Okay, so finally we're done with the realm. We're only at the very first component. Um, but next we have the lexical environment. And the lexical environment just points to the environment record that contains the bindings for everything except for variables with the var keyword. So in this case, that is the global environment record. And then we have the variable environments, and this points to the environment record that stores the bindings for the variables declared with the var keyword, which in this case also is the global environment record. Now, this all looks a bit visually overwhelming. So for the rest of this video, I'll just be merging these all together just into the uh, global environment record. So finally, let's take a look at our script. So when parsing this code in the creation phase, it first encounters the variable first name, and this is declared with the const keyword. So it uses the execution execution context lexical environments. And this in turn points to the global environment record. And this again uses the declarative record to handle the identifier bindings created with the const keyword. And something 
kind of special about variables created with the const and let keyword uh, and also classes is that they are uninitialized, meaning that memory space is set up, they're hoisted, but they don't have a value yet. They are uninitialized. They're only initialized during the execution phase of the execution context. So they are stored. So memory is allocated for them, but they have no value yet. So then on line two, pretty similar, um, we have the last name variable, and this time we use the let keyword. So it again uses the lexical environment, which points to the global environment record, which again uses the declarative record to store this binding. And similar to const, it is uninitialized until the execution phase. And then we have the function greet. And function declarations are managed by the object record. And in contrast to the two previous variables, functions are initialized during the creation phase. So a new function object is created for greet. And function objects contain many properties, uh, two of which are the environment, which points to the environment record in which the function was declared. So in this case, the global environment record. And it also has the call method, which gets called whenever we invoke the function. All right, there are no other variables or function declarations here. So we move on to the next phase, the execution phase. So now the global execution context is added to the call stack and is executed. So again, on the first line, we have the first name variable. So now this variable gets initialized with the value of the string Lydia. And then on the second line, we have the last name variable. So similar to the first one, it now gets initialized with the string Hallie. And then we have the greet function, but this is already initialized in memory, so nothing gets done here. Then on line nine, we actually invoke this function. So the call method on the function object is called, and this in turn creates a new function execution context. And you may have guessed, again, this execution context goes through two phases, so the creation phase and the execution phase. So in this case, the lexical environment contains a brand new function environment record, and this manages the identifier bindings for the parameters, variables, and function declarations within this function. And it also has an outer end property, again, the outer environment, which points to the environment of the function object, which in this case is the global environment record. And unlike the global execution context, we now have to deal with function parameters. So in this case, name to greet. And these are immediately added to the function environment record. And also these are immediately initialized with the value that we pass. So in this case, the string Lydia. Next, we declare the full name with the const keyword. And this is also added to the function environment record, but it is uninitialized until we get to the execution phase. So now that we've allocated memory for the parameters and the variables, it's time for the execution phase. So the function execution context is added onto the call stack. So first we have the full name variable, and this uses both the name to greet parameter value but also the last name variable. Now the function environment record itself doesn't have a binding for last name. So instead it uses the outer end property on the environment record to search through the chain of environments, the scope chain, to see if the outer environment does have the binding for this. So in this case, that is the global environment record. And yes, this one does have last name, which is Hallie. So now full name is equal to the string Lydia Hallie. And then the function returns, hello, Lydia Hallie. Uh, and as it returns, the function execution context is removed from the call stack. And the topmost execution context is the currently running execution context, which is again, the global one. Now there's nothing else to do in our script. So now also the global execution context is removed from the call stack, which is the end of our script. And during this explanation, we actually covered three important topics, namely hoisting, the scope chain and closures. So hoisting happens during the creation phase of an execution context and variables declared with a const and let keywords, classes and imports are hoisted. So memory is allocated for them, but they remain uninitialized. They're only initialized during the execution phase when their actual declaration is reached in the code. So when we try to access these values before they're declared, this will result in the good old reference error. And the period kind of from the start of the block until they're declared is called the temporal dead zone. And in this zone, when trying to access any of these values, it'll result in a reference error. Then we have variables with the var keyword. And during the creation phase of the execution context, these are also hoisted and initialized 
but with a value of undefined. And these variables get redefined with their actual values during the execution phase whenever their declaration is reached within the code. And lastly, we have functions, uh, including async generator functions and so on. And these are already initialized during the creation phase with our actual function object. This means that we can invoke a function before its declaration. That would be totally fine because uh, the function object is already in memory. The scope chain refers to the mechanism made available through the outer env property on environment records. So whenever we try to access a property that is not available in the current context environment record, the engine will traverse the chain of environments, the scope chain, until it finds the binding. And closures in JavaScript are formed whenever an inner function keeps a reference to the outer function's environment record. And this is made possible through the function object's environment property. So for example, if we refactor this code a bit so it returns the inner function object instead of the returned value from inner, now when we invoke get full name, a new function execution context is created that has a brand new function environment record. And this function environment record's outer end property points to the environment property on the function object, which in this case is the outer function's environment record. So within inner, we still have access to the last name variable. So it'll traverse the scope chain and outer env pointing to the outer function's environment record, which contains a binding for last name. Now in another video, I'll cover scope hoisting closures and so on in a lot more detail. But for now, I just wanted to give kind of a high level overview of execution context, uh, environment records, and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to support my channel, I do have a Patreon link below so I can hopefully make more free content like this on YouTube. Thank you so much and have fun coding.